Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to attempt to review this sword stand right here and tell you why I think it's a good sword stand. It's from Enzo Workshop. I will link their wares in the description down below, as well as these two specifically. So if you're so inclined on getting them, uh, you will have links to do so. Uh, they have an Etsy workshop. They're out of Ukraine, and I think they make some really cool stuff. And I think the prices are reasonably competitive, especially on this two-tier stand right here, which happens to look very, very pretty to my eye. Anyway, you should know as well that these are review samples. I got them for free. If you think that makes me biased, then at least you know right at the start. So, somewhat funny story. I actually recorded an unboxing trying to take these out of the box, and I was going to give you my impressions of the stand right away because it's a sword stand. Uh, how complicated could it be? And I figured, well, I can at least tell you what I think in looking at it. But then, as I thought about it, I actually have a boatload of sword stands, and I look at sword stands online quite a bit, and so... Um, I can probably give you a more in-depth review and why I think that this is actually a compelling offering and something I wouldn't necessarily have considered because I don't generally look on Etsy, Etsy for sword stands. But uh, I digress. I think it's a good stand. I think after seeing it in hand in particular, uh, this two-piece stand is, is a very compelling offering and why I wouldn't necessarily hesitate to reach out to them to do some woodworking projects uh, because I, I suck at it. I can, I've made do, but given what I spent on materials and time, um, I, in retrospect, probably would have reached out to them to have them do my sword stands uh, that I've mounted on the walls now. So anyway, hopefully I will explain why that is. Plan is to review the two sword stands to share with you, you know, the prices and what I think are, is good about them. Uh, but then I'll compare them a little bit to some of the woodworking that I've done, uh, some of the custom pieces that I've acquired over the years, and some of the, the mass manufactured pieces that I've gotten. Why I think this is superior and maybe... Uh, worth your consideration. So that's what I've planned. Hopefully it's helpful. Uh, the first thing I'm going to start out with are these wall stands, and that's because uh, I'm not going to mount them right now. I have a place in mind for them, but there's a TV in the way, and so I'm not going to hang them up just yet, but I do want to tell you why I think they're good. Now, these are a little more expensive um, and don't offer as honestly as compelling a value, but I can understand why they are the price that they are. They're 38 bucks, and it's a three-tier sword stand. It came with uh, the hardware to do everything, so it's not just cut out. There's little recessed metal pieces in here to uh, to hold a, a flat head of a screw, um, and it came with the hardware as well to mount it, some drywall anchors and, uh, and four screws to mount them in the wall. Um, the paint on them is quite good, and I imagine this is a painful thing to get done to paint them black. I can make out enough of the wood texture where I can see that they're made out of solid wood, uh, and they are even and nicely constructed, but at the same time, uh, they're relatively simple in comparison to this guy, which is $53 or $58. And this seems like a much more complex and pretty looking thing. So when I compare $53 to $38, uh, it seems like these don't, don't make as compelling an offering, at least by default. But that doesn't mean that they're a bad deal. <laughs> and I will, I will elaborate on why that is in a moment. One, they're hardwood. They're solid. Uh, they're very well made. They are uh, painted in, in, in a nice, even coat. And I say that when I look at every other stand that I have, regardless of how high end it is, I have a nicer one from Hanway at the end that's about $50, $150. I don't see any, or at least very, very few imperfections in the surface of the paint. It's very well, very well done. And if you have a nice sword and you want a nice place to put it, these seem like very nice objects to suit that, uh, <clears throat> that purpose. Uh, for the money, they are nice, and, uh, but that's about it. They're painted stands. What I can tell you is I tried making my own ones. So here's uh, my attempt at a three-tier three -tier stand. Certainly a different approach. It comes out from the wall and staggers. Um, but you can also see all the imperfections here, all the errant tool marks, all the uh, winds and unevenness, and it has lots of ridges and imperfections that have just been a magnet for dust. So uh, these were not successful in my mind. And the wood is not inexpensive. So uh, the piece of wood, that oh, the oak that I bought, was larger, and this was maybe some leftover pieces from it, but I spent... Uh, a couple hundred dollars on oak planks to make the sword stands that I made, and all of them have a finish level that's pretty similar to this, very rough around the edges. I didn't have a router to finish. They aren't finished sanded, and there's uneven kind of wavy lines on it. I'm, I'm no, you know, I make no apologies for my level of skill as a craftsman. I'm not it. Uh, but I, didn't, I wasn't able to find a sword stand that was made like this. So the sword stand I have on the wall comes out in three tiers to hold three swords, and that's because I have so many of them uh, and not enough wall space, I guess. So I need, I need them to be built out. Uh, and this was an extension of that. This is a slightly different piece. You could see that you can basically, I move it out in, in tiers of three, uh, but this would also hold three and it's certainly much more elegant, much better made and not necessarily much more expensive. If I added in the hardware, the cost of the wood, the stain, um, the sandpaper and the materials to do it, I would certainly be over $38 just 
in the cost of abrasives, wood, and, and stain and whatnot. Obviously, I can make a lot more pieces, uh, but at the same time, it's not necessarily cheap if all you have in mind is a sword stand. So anyway, there's, uh, there's that as an attempt. I'm going to move on to this one, though, because it's the more exciting piece to me. And I believe it's $53. It's in the mountain configuration. You see the little ridges here. And I really think that this is a gorgeous stand. I can't remember exactly what wood they're using, but it has lots of decoration and color in it. Things that maybe aren't to the Japanese aesthetic. They, I think, tend to pull out the, uh, the knots and things like that. But I happen to really think that the wood is very, very beautiful. And I think that this stand is, is fantastic, <laughs> especially as I look at it. It doesn't smell the paint or whatever oil or, or lacquer they're using on here. Uh, doesn't smell like it's still curing, which is nice. I can put a sword on it right away and not worry about it sticking to the lacquer on the saya. Every end is smooth and I don't see tool marks or sanding marks. Everything is, is done very well. All the edges are even, all the lines are even. And it fits together pretty easy. It came, came out in, in parts and I can just basically give them a yank and take them apart. If I switch sides, I mean, I can reverse them and that's, that's easy enough to do, but if I switch it around, they kind of maybe inadvertently fit. This one's a little tight and this one is a little bit loose, but if I reverse the sides, then they both have a similar level of pressure uh, to stick them together. Swords look very good on them. It's a stand though. I mean, there's not a lot of moving parts. I've covered basically the major functionality of it. Swords fit in it. It's very stable. It's got little cork feet on the bottom to keep it from rattling about, which in comparison, uh, this one does not have it, and you can see that it will, well, I guess it's an even surface here, so it's not. It'll, it'll rattle, and if I do the equivalent thing here, it doesn't, doesn't rattle. Anyway, uh, that's something easy to fix, but it's got little cork feet, so cork feet, so it doesn't, doesn't do that. But it's also just doesn't have tool marks, and there's no surfaces that are picking up lint or catching on anything, no errant slivers. It has nice rounding marks all the way around it in a shapely, kind of handsome appearance with some wood uh, patterns in it that I find very aesthetically pleasing. Some of this kind of uh, blonde look with the, the stripe running through it, I find it to be a very aesthetically pleasing, aesthetically pleasing sword stand. It's a bit on the narrow side for some of the longer swords, but for what I need it for to be portable, and to, uh, to use in photos and stuff like that. I think it is both handsome and, uh, and small enough that it's, um, well, portable, large enough that it's going to hold even some of the larger swords. But it does look a little bit off when I put, like, katana on it in comparison to some of the larger stands, like this one here from Hanway, which is much more expensive, but you can see how much wider and bigger it is if you're, if you're holding big swords. Uh, more on that in just a moment, though. The other bits that I can note about is that, again, 53 bucks shipping to me would be between 20 and $30, which would put the point, the price point, especially if I'm figuring that I'm just getting one stand and not two, at around uh, uh, 70 to $80 for the stand. And as I look at what other options are available for that in a two-tier stand, you can often find hardwood stands on Amazon and things like that, or ones with a lot more pieces. But the things that I see on Amazon don't necessarily give me the impression that they're as well-finished, that they're as well-refined, and they don't have the same de depth and dimension. They certainly don't have the, the wood pattern marks that I'm seeing here. Not to say that you can't find them, but I didn't see anything that looked quite as, as good as this. Now, obviously, if you're buying more stuff and the shipping gets cheaper per piece, uh, then the, the, um, the price for this thing is $53 by itself. But it's shipping from Ukraine, so there's going to be a shipping cost that you wouldn't necessarily incur if you were buying something uh, from Amazon. And so, personally, I think the edges and the quality that I'm seeing here make me uh, <laughs> inclined to to buy it and have it shipped. It came really well packed and, uh, and overall it was quite good. Um, I actually recorded a, a unboxing, if you will, but it just didn't have the right energy to, well, not the right energy. It was, it was late and my kids were being very noisy and, uh, and honestly, I didn't remember what the cost was. And as I was recording it, I thought I reviewed just kind of the stand itself. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, I actually have all these other stands and it would probably be more helpful with, for somebody thinking about buying a stand seeing some of the $20, $30 options, you know, why, why would I spend more money? Well, the aesthetics might answer that for you, but seeing them kind of directly next to some of the other offerings uh, might be helpful. So I'll, I'll keep this kind of in the back of the frame and I'll move on to some of the other stands uh, that I have. So here is a cheapo offering uh, and you can see that a lot of these stands are made out of fiberboard. And so this is not a solid wood. If I push really hard, I can crack this in half. It's made out of, I believe, MDF or some other kind of fiberboard. It sits together, but it doesn't, um, these come apart a lot easier. And not that that's a huge deal when it's sitting there, but it's certainly wobblier. And you can see it has these little felt things. Now in the 
camera angles that you're going to see for new stuff, these little felt things might look like they stay on and, and add a degree of zazz, but um, only on the higher end pieces have I found that they actually stay there. Otherwise, they just kind of uh, crumble off after, after a little bit. Anyway, there's one. If I go to a two-tier stand, maybe a little more equivalent, it's larger. I don't find that to necessarily be helpful. Um, this is tall enough to separate from subas and things like that. The larger ones only make it a little a little tippier, especially given that the footprint on this shorter one is wider and on the lo longer one it isn't. And you can see I have to usually brace this with other things and other short stands sitting in front of it to keep it stable. And again, it'll come apart reasonably easy. It's made out of the same MDF fiberboard. Uh, between here, there's little tool marks and things like that, and these are magnets for dust. Uh, overall, though, these are inexpensive, but they tend to... They tend to hold up and I guess do the basic job so long as you don't have animals <laughs> or anything that are going to whack into them. Uh, this one isn't particularly tippy, but it's not as though if you have a cat that that's going to stop the cat. Um, here's another one, very, very similar. Again, it's got these uh, felt pieces in it that have started to come off and this is not finished on the top. So I don't know if this is a really, really old one, probably from like the early 90s or something like that. But the finish work on here is really rough and it gathers dust. And I actually tried to clean these off before I did this video. And like as I as I wash my hands over it, like it's still collecting balls of dust because this is just basically finished like sandpaper. Uh, at a distance, it looks OK, but up close, not so much. And the parts are, are somewhat loose and kind of janky on close inspection. In co contrast, this is all nice and tight and well fit and very pretty to look at. Um, my wife wants me to get rid of all the other ones and buy more of these. Uh, here's another example. I have to set it down gingerly because it might fall apart. So it's fine when swords are pressed on it, but when you pick it up, it comes apart pretty easy. Uh, I could glue these and just tend not to. This incidentally has a screw that holds this piece on. I'm guessing I could probably take it apart if I took that screw out, but it feels a lot more solid. It's not held together by little pegs that I then have to glue. Uh, same kind of thing in terms of finish work on here. It's a little bit wider, which is debatably a handy thing. Well, I happen to like it for longer swords, but uh, finish quality is pretty much on par for the rest. Lots of tool markings in the groove, and then it, well, this one is a little bit more stable, but not really so much. That's something that you tend to get with a lot of these inexpensive sword stands is they don't, you know, they look like they're solid, but it takes a little extra glue uh, or adhesive to really make them that way. But then they don't come apart easily either. This one, if I want to store it, because I'm not taking photos of the swords, I can kind of easily put it away. And when I'm ready for it, back out it goes and it's back to solid again, just friction fit. This is a little bit of a nicer one. It's a two-tier stand, uh, but you have large bolts in the side that hold it together, and that's one of the reasons it's nicer. It has relatively even paint, but there's a lot more imperfections in this paint than there is in the uh, black stand pieces that I have over here, despite it being one of the nicer ones. Uh, the felt is on here. It hasn't come off, but at the same time, it's worn away, <laughs> which is, I guess, a different problem. It's absorbed a lot of oil over time as I put bare blades and stuff like that on it, and it's kind of turned a little goopy. Uh, this is one of the nicer ones that I have, and for what it is, it's stable. Um, I don't know if you can buy one of these or exactly even where I acquired it, but uh, for what it is, it's, it's nicer and it's been stable, but at the same time, certainly pales in comparison to some of the wood detail that I see on this one. Plus, I don't have to look at the large bolts in the side on here. One more is this stand, which might happen to look pretty zazzy sitting on this little pedestal, but it's not evenly made. I can't exactly remember where I got these either. It's happened. I've gotten a lot of stands with various sword purchases that I made over the years, but these pieces are very loosey-goosey and come off. Again, I could glue them, but then I can't take it apart to store. It makes them harder to, to take down and move around and to clean as well. So um, a little loosier goose here. I could solve that with more pegs, but the stand is actually uneven as well. And the lacquer shows a lot of little imperfections and goopy portions where it's been poured unevenly. In contrast, these are nice clean lines. There's no waver. The sanding is even. And I can see that that's just not the case even on this stand, which happens to be one of the nicer ones that I have. The last example is one from Hanway. They might be able to make you something like this, and I have no idea how much it would cost. But uh, this example from Hanway 
is uh, one of the larger stands. It was $150 or $250 to make this stand, so it, well, it's not a cheap example of a stand. It's very wide, has felt that's actually stuck on, has a little shelf for you to put your cleaning kit or some maybe a tanto or something else to display here. Um, it's a dust magnet, it's hard to clean, and there's certainly imperfections on it. On the bottom, you can basically make out that the, the base of this looks like it's made from a 2x4, so I don't think the wood in here is particularly great. As I give it a flick, it feels very hollow in comparison to some of the other hardwoods that are that are in the smaller stand. But uh, this has been a great stand. The, the felt is, again, a dust magnet, but I can clean it off reasonably easily, and this has actually held up pretty well. For the money, it's uh, not a cheap stand, and it's been handsome. I like the size and scale of it. I like the little shelf on the front of it. Um, but if it out of this wood, that would be that would be even more ideal. Uh, but again, this stand from Hanway is not inexpensive. It is a relatively expensive stand, but it's it's pretty, and the closest in proximity. I think I would I like the size and scale of this one, though, and I like that. I like the way it holds it. I like the black lacquer and, and red felt. So I think I like this one actually a little bit more, mostly for the size. But if I could get it made out of these materials and this quality level, well, that would be that would be ideal. Uh, the last stand that I have that I can maybe compare it to personally is one that's a custom piece. And it shows what happens when you don't, uh, well, some of these pieces wiggle around and what happens when you don't have a middle brace. But this is made to hold a different kind of sword. It's got brass pins in it so I can rest a bear blade on it and it kind of bites in without diminishing the edge of the sword substantially in contrast to wood where it can kind of damage the sandal stand a little bit more. This isn't a great stand but it's uh, it's okay. It's just basically an oak plank. <laughs> but you could see that this, if you were to go and buy these pieces with stain, it would probably cost you about as much to make this stand as to just get this one from and so workshop. And I also did, again, some basic looks on Amazon to see what parts were available or what pieces, uh, types of sword stands you could get. For $50, you can actually get a variety of different stands. There's a ton of them, some solid wood ones. But what I was able to see on Cult of Athena looked more akin to this on the less expensive line where you could find uh, $20, $30 stands that make me think that it's very similar to some of these uh, basic, basic stands and, and the similar qualities to be expected, but it's also cheaper. On Amazon, there are some nicer ones that are hardwood, but they don't seem to have the same crisp lines and the same material that is of has as much pattern and, and kind of character as this does. So uh, all of the little details, though, all of the routing, it's all very pretty and, and well done. And if you're ordering a couple different things, then the shipping becomes less of a barrier in contrast to, to some of the free options that you might have on Amazon. Anyway, um, this, uh, again, I believe is 53 or $58. The black ones nearest I could tell were $38 uh, and they have a bunch of varieties with you know like eight tier sword stands I bet if you asked them they could probably make something wangasy like mine that holds three of them on the way out but I have no idea what something like that would cost I did ask for photos and they sent me uh, some photos of some of the custom things that they've done to hold various martial arts equipment uh, so I'm overlaying the video or photos that they've sent me uh, there so if you have an idea maybe ping them I've been very happy though this is a pretty stand you'll see it in more more photos and videos and things like that uh, in the in the coming years as I as I use it. Anyway, that's all I got. I think it's a good stand. Hopefully the video has been helpful in contrast to some of the other pieces out there and some general thoughts on them. Uh, that's all I got. Uh, special thanks to Enzo Workshop for sending me the examples here. Hopefully, again, it's been helpful. Cheers and thanks for watching.